Welcome back. The Boston Celtics are going to win game six tonight and force a seventh and deciding game and Sunday night in the NBA Finals. The Celtics are going to have to find a way for Jason Tatum not to fade down the stretch. It was clear in the game five loss that he and Jalen Brown struggled in the final period with Tatum playing more postseason minutes than anyone else in the playoffs. 943 minutes so far with Brown right behind him with 876. Uh, part of the problem is the Celtics have not gotten the support they've needed at times from their bench. Meanwhile, closeout games are among the toughest to win, and the Gold State Warriors are well aware of that. Three times this postseason, the Warriors have failed to close out teams in elimination games against the Nuggets, Grizzlies, and the Mavericks. In all three games, trailed by double digits at half, eventually getting the job done on their next opportunity. So we'll see what happens tonight. Game six tips off at 8 o'clock. You watch it live right here on KSAT 12. The fight in Texas Aggies are in the College World Series for only the seventh time in school history looking for their first ever NCAA championship in baseball. But thanks to new head coach Jim Schlossnagel, the Aggies are now set to play Oklahoma in the first round tomorrow, 1 o'clock in Omaha. Good luck, Aggies. San Antonio Missions in action last night against those adorable but annoying sod poodles of Amarillo. <laughs> the Missions lost game one of this series, so they came back with a vengeance. San Antonio scored each of the first three innings and finished with a four-run third inning. Uh, Missions beat back the sod poodles 7-2. Series continues tonight out at Nelson Wolf Stadium. And the Missions would love your support yes. against those sod, sod poodles. poodles. Yes, well, they did a good job this time. Yeah. Not too bad. Time now, 444 and 77 degrees for now. Coming up next, a first look at a special interview with a juror that served during the defamation trial of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. And welcome back to 446. A juror in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard defamation trial tells ABC News in an exclusive interview that Depp's account was more believable. ABC's Trevor Alt has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, a juror in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial gives their impression of the star's testimonies and what led the jury to the groundbreaking verdict who says a lot of Amber's story didn't add up. He balled up his fists, leaned back, and headbutted me square in the nose. The crying, the facial expressions that she had, the staring at the jury, all of us were very uncomfortable. She would answer one question and she would be crying, and two seconds later she would turn ice cold. Some of us use the expression crocodile tears. I don't know how... <laughs> All of that and many more revelations from the juror coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Right now it's 447. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. All right, let's get a look around town. We know we have that major issue out at 35, but here everywhere else looks quiet and calm. US 90 at General McMullen, you can see not really a lot to talk about when we uh, when we take a look around town. 35 at Ben's Engelman, it is quiet out there for the majority of what we are seeing from TransGuide. But unfortunately, we do have that crash. We're going to bring that right now to your screen there at 35 at Walsham. Completely different situation out over here where we see vehicles are down just to one lane navigating through that crash involving an 18 wheeler and another car. Now Katrina Weber is out there this morning working to get us some information, but we do know that one of those drivers, the driver that was involved was taken to the hospital in critical condition. So hopefully we'll have an update on that a little bit later on. But right now the buildup isn't too bad as what we were seeing on TransGuide. It is slight because it is still early in the morning, but with first responders out there and the investigation continuing, if we see them out there as morning does go on, we'll likely expect uh, to see more delays. Uh, but right now now elsewhere. Thankfully, no need to worry or rush out the door just yet. So you can see more uh, majority of the screen showing a lot of green, but we have also have those active construction spots. So be on the lookout for that. But of course, make sure that you watch out for first responders. I'd say that hopefully before the show ends, we'll have a better update. But right now it's just not looking good, guys. All right. Thank you, Stephen. As we said, Mike is back from the beach and we're hearing pretty good reports that ocean breeze does help, doesn't it? Oh, yes, indeed it does. Temperatures are down. Of course, you got all the, the moisture coming in there, but um, yes. and everybody had temperatures down yesterday. I mean, we only 
only hit 95 degrees. <laughs> For real? A nice yeah. break. Uh, officially yes. here in town. So coolest we've been since like February, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems like it out there. Um, and we had plenty of clouds, although some folks had enough of a break of the clouds in the evening to see a beautiful full moon with yesterday, the strawberry moon, and probably a little more of an enhanced orangey color to it because of some of that lovely Saharan dust. Boy, you could just see that especially driving back in uh, in toward town uh, yesterday. All that Saharan dust in the sky, that orangey glow to everything. We've got our clouds out there right now. Yes, the dust, unfortunately, is going to be uh, sticking around for the next couple of days, and we will get more of this big uh, kind of a, a surge of it actually coming in here today, and then that's going to start to dissipate somewhat as we go on into the next couple of days. So that's the good news. One more day of that orangey look out there with that Saharan dust, and then it is going to start to thin out somewhat. Yeah, 95 yesterday, still had some triple digits where there was more in the way of sunshine, obviously, off to the west and to the southwest. And as far as today, though, we are going to be back up in triple digit range. So we stay uh, right around upper 70s this morning. We got our morning clouds hanging around here and then we start to see a bit more in the way of some sunshine, make it up through the mid and upper 80s later on this morning. Again, 90 at noon and Yep, there it is, triple digits once again. So this will be the 15th day this year officially that we have hit uh, triple digit readings with plenty of sunshine out there. Again, that hazy sunshine. And at least the humidity is going to be dropping down somewhat by later on this afternoon. So we're not going to have just that ridiculously high heat index reading out there, just a couple of degrees above the actual air temperature. Heat index should be 100 here in town. And then obviously into the low hundreds down to the uh, the southwest, so a little bit drier air out there to the, uh, the west of us. Now, as far as satellite picture, we've got the low clouds, which started to move on in here. You can barely see that uh, little faint shade of darker gray right there. And then up to the north, first of all, I mean, just look at the country, cut it sort of in half horizontally. Nothing's going on in the southern half. And then all that going on up there. We're talking about flooding up around Yellowstone, severe weather up through the Great Lakes that moved on through there. All that's moving straight west to east. Nothing is coming down here. And that, unfortunately, whole pattern is not going to be changing uh, for the foreseeable future it's just going to remain stuck in this pattern 90 mostly sunny skies today at noon again hazy sunshine 100 for a high temperature today at least tomorrow excuse me yes tomorrow starting off got my days mixed up there we are going to be seeing less in the way of some dust so more sunshine and we're looking at triple digit temperatures all the way through father's day of course we have the long holiday weekend and nothing's changing Maybe a little bit of a change by next week. Subtle, obviously, but nothing jumps off the, uh, the graphic there. Yeah, the little cloud icons you have on there look like they're burning off as we speak. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Temporary. <yeah. Okay. laughs> like, yeah, forget it. We're, it's too hot. So, <laughs> Okay, thank you, Mike. Thank you. 452, 77 degrees. And Father's Day is coming up. And if you're still looking for a good gift, a grill might be the way to go. We're going to show you some of the top picks for this grilling season. 455, it seems like things just taste better when they're hot off the grill. So just in time for Father's Day, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz tells us which grills get the job done best. It's time to get your grill on, whether you want a quick sear or low and slow for perfect ribs. Grilling is great because it's so versatile. You can slow smoke barbecue on a charcoal grill all day or use your gas grill to make a dinner for the family on a weeknight without getting your kitchen dirty. So what's the right grill for you? Consumer Reports put several to the test. If you love that smoky barbecue flavor, a charcoal grill is probably your best bet. You can keep it classic with a kettle grill. CR recommends this 22 inch Weber. For even better performance, they say check out this top rated DynaGlow. It scored well for even and indirect cooking. Plus, it's easy to add coals and clean. If you prefer the convenience of gas, CR found dozens to recommend and you don't have to burn a hole in your wallet. This next grill preheats fast, it's sturdy, and of course cooks well. If you really want to up your grilling game, a Kamado grill is definitely the way to go. They use charcoal, but they get really hot for things like wood-fired pizza. They can also hold a low, steady temperature for things like slow smoking a brisket. They recommend this Kamado Joe Classic. It starts at about $1,300. No matter what type of grill you choose, be sure to keep it at least 10 feet away from your house or shrubs. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 
Oh, some dad somewhere is about to get lucky in the grill department. Yeah, that would be a great gift. Especially, did you see how much that egg grill was? <laughs> yeah, that was I forgot how pricey those were. You leave the price tag on here, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. right. 457, about 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, President Biden is warning that he may invoke emergency powers to increase output of gasoline to try to curb the rising costs at the pump. And a big change could be coming to Facebook soon. Details ahead in your morning Tech Bites. And a quick check of the roads with TransSky. Still problems there at I-35 at Walsall where we had that accident earlier. We're going to be checking back with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning with no relief in sight when it comes to gas prices. President Biden is demanding that oil companies explain why they are cutting gasoline production as prices soar to record highs. Back here at home outside with live cam. It feels like we didn't hit 100 yesterday. You are right on target. Mike is back from the beach and he'll have a look at our forecast. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, June 16th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a nice little break yesterday. I know finally I got to take, you know, a little trip outside, go for a run, and it wasn't painful. Agreed. I got into my truck around 4 o'clock mm -hmm. yesterday afternoon, Mike, and it didn't say 1,003 degrees. <laughs> it only said 93. Oh, okay. You said 1,003. I was going to say, what, 995? So, yeah, 95 for a high temperature officially yesterday out there at the airport. Those clouds really, really did help out and um, fond memory that we're talking about as of right now because we're going to be back to the triple digits later on today. 78 degrees starting off this morning and look at that bottom number 72. So the humidity is definitely out there and yeah, 100 for a high temperature later on today. We are going to have more in the way of sunshine, not those beautiful clouds that we had sticking around here. Uh, as far as the aquifer, it did go up two tenths of a foot still obviously for saws customers still in stage two water restrictions and mold is on the low side. As far as heat index this morning, yep, we have a little bit of that to uh, to talk about. It feels like 80 here in town, as well as down to the south around Pleasanton, 82 New Braunfels and Castroville. Now, of course, yesterday we did have the Saharan dust, and it was really in the past couple of days had it around here. And unfortunately, it looks like it is going to be somewhat thicker today. So we'll have, and it may, I mean, that may affect. I know yesterday it couldn't really clear my throat that well. It seemed like, and I was wondering if that was from the, uh, the Saharan dust. So that is going to be sticking around today. Good news is, though, it is going to start to thin out once we get into uh, tomorrow as well as going on into the weekend. So that's a little bit of relief out there, but we are still going to have plenty of very, very hot temperatures around here, not only today, but foreseeable future. So mostly cloudy, warm and humid this morning, and then mostly sunny again, hazy, 100 high temperature, not as hazy going into, like I said, tomorrow and the weekend, but still just as as hot and really no relief in sight. Perhaps some minor changes next week. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's the latest on that big accident on the northeast side? You know, Mike, it looks like it's progressively gotten worse. Uh, we are now at a 5 a.m. hour, so we know more people are getting their days started. Clicker not working, but I'm going to go ahead and work from here and give you a view at TransGuide, and you can see that uh, vehicles right now what look like uh, they're coming to a complete stop there, and this is because we have that crash that involves an eight wheeler. Now we're going to talk to Katrina Weber in just a moment, but right now it's not looking good for our friends along 35 at Walsham. If this is your travel route, I urge you look for an alternative way to get to your destination. We'll be doing the same as long as there's an active scene there, but you can see right now a lot of those vehicles are just at a complete standstill. Hopefully we'll have a better update as the morning does go on, but right now we are seeing that crash in the southbound lanes of I-35, not far from Eisenhower and Walsham Road, and you can see the change here now is a stretch of orange and yellow right there that's shown on our map. We're going to have to watch it closely and give you those updates throughout the morning, but elsewhere we're not finding any other issues to report just yet. It's still pretty green on the screen. If it gets if it stays a little quiet elsewhere, we'll talk some construction a little later on, but the big problem, as I mentioned, right here along 35 at Walsham. Katrina is live there right now. Katrina, it looks like it's gotten a little worse on the traffic front. Any more information to report? Well, good morning. You're definitely right. Uh, the traffic has backed up even worse than it was before, but we are seeing some progress in baby steps, I guess you would say. Behind me, you can see that the uh, pickup that was involved is now on the back of a flatbed tow truck. We also have a King Kong wrecker here to deal with that 18-wheeler. Well, this crash happened uh, what, before 4 o'clock this morning. Uh, police tell us now that 
that 18-wheeler had stopped on the side of the road. It was broken down. For some reason, the driver of the pickup then ran into the back of it. Firefighters had to cut that driver out of the pickup. He was taken to a hospital, and we understand that he did suffer some life-threatening injuries. And that is why there is such a thorough investigation going on now. We have a full investigative team from San Antonio Police looking into this crash. They're working in the outer lanes of southbound 35 between Walsham and Eisenhower. And so that is the problem area. In the meantime, traffic is moving, although slowly, in these inner lanes. It looks like two lanes on the inside are open right now as this investigation and the cleanup continues. Uh, I'm seeing a lot more people on the road, so it's possible that that is a crew to perhaps unload that 18-wheeler because I've heard that they do have some food, possibly some refrigerated food inside the back of that 18-wheeler. So we'll stay here and see exactly what happens. But I can tell you all those men in yellow vests look like they are probably about to start unloading that cargo. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Today, the Texas Legislative Committee investigating the Uvalde shooting will hold a hearing. It is set to take place in Uvalde, and they are expected to hear testimony from law enforcement and others who were impacted. Witnesses are expected to be questioned in private. Right now, it's not clear how long this particular investigation will last. Later today, San Antonio City Council is set to decide how some council districts could change. U.S. Census showed a huge population growth, but that growth wasn't seen equally amongst all districts. An advisory committee approved a more evenly distributed map. The colored portions show how districts would change outside of those red boundaries. On just districts two and three would remain unchanged, but in general, more populated north side districts had to shrink. Some of the smaller districts around downtown and the west side could grow. The new map puts you in a new district. It would not take effect until voters hit the polls for the May 2023 election. Now back to the economy where the focus remains on inflation and those extraordinary gas prices. And now President Biden suggesting he may take new action. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning, with inflation the number one issue of concern for most Americans and no relief in sight when it comes to gas prices, new reaction to the letter President Biden sent yesterday to big oil executives blaming their corporate greed along with the war in Ukraine for the record high prices at the pump. The president warned the executives he could invoke emergency powers to increase output at refineries, writing, quote, profit margins well above normal being passed directly onto American families are not acceptable. But the White House is not sharing how the president might use his executive powers. We are calling on them to do the right thing, to be patriots here uh, and not to use the war uh, as an excuse. Oil refinery capacity is down by 3 million barrels a day since 2020. But the American Petroleum Institute blames Biden's green energy push, claiming the administration's, quote, misguided policy agenda shifting away from domestic oil and natural gas has compounded inflationary pressures. And as for those record profits, oil companies are saying they're making up for big losses during the pandemic, like the $22 billion loss ExxonMobil reported in 2020. Any revenues that are being made right now are being made up to uh, balance out losses from back in 20 and 21, and also to now begin reinvesting. In the meantime, stock futures were up overnight after the Federal Reserve's latest move to bring down inflation, raising interest rates by three quarters of a point, making everything from car loans to credit card debt more expensive. Fed Chair Jerome Powell says it's still possible to avoid a recession, but a growing number of economists disagree. I think that events of the last few months have raised the degree of difficulty, created great challenges. And there's new evidence of the toll inflation is taking on the economy. Retail spending unexpectedly dropped last month. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. 508, 77 degrees. And still ahead, a big design change could soon be coming to Facebook. We're going to tell you why. And next, how the San Antonio Zoo is getting involved in Congress to help vulnerable species. And taking a look outside with live cam, 77 degrees for now. A nice little break yesterday, but today things will heat up once again. We're going to be checking in with Mike pretty soon.
Welcome back. 512, the San Antonio Zoo putting its support behind a bill in Congress that aims to provide funding for vulnerable species. Advocates and zoo staff are talking about how the Recovering America's Wildlife Act would benefit the San Antonio Zoo. If passed, it would give nearly $1.5 billion a year to fund state wildlife plans. Now, animals that would benefit include the whooping crane, the horned lizards, and sea turtles. You know, as we're transforming Texas, you know, we're degrading and fragmenting habitat. We're uh, you know, creating uh, intense competition for water resources, introducing those invasive species and causing other problems. But the good news is that we have so many uh, success stories for conservation. And the full U.S. House may vote on the bill in the coming weeks. We'll keep you posted. 513, about 77 degrees. And still ahead, details on GE's latest washing machine that has Amazon's digital assistant built in. Plus, YouTube Music introduces new seasonal recaps of your favorite songs and artists. From prom dresses to workouts and new adventures, you hope the more you give, the less they'll miss. But even if your teen was vaccinated against meningitis in the past, they may be missing vaccination for meningitis B. Although uncommon, up to one in five survivors of meningitis will have long-term consequences. Now, as you're thinking about all the vaccines your teen might need, make sure you ask your doctor if your teen is missing meningitis B vaccination. In the Middle Ages, the remedy for tooth decay was to kiss a donkey. Hurry up! Today, there's a better way to help keep decay away. Act. With fortifying fluoride, it can make teeth up to four times stronger. Excellent. Act. Long live your teeth. Think mom's calling 911? Nope. She's switching her choice cashback category to dining. So she earns more on our backup plan. Delivery. With the Bank of America customized cash rewards card, you just can't stop getting rewarded. Welcome back to 516. Facebook is reportedly working on a major redesign to help it compete with TikTok. ABC's Mono Kassar Abdi is back with details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Facebook reportedly making changes to mimic TikTok. A leaked memo obtained by The Verge reveals Facebook plans to change its algorithm to feature more short-form videos. Plans also include reuniting Facebook and Messenger as one app to mimic TikTok's messaging abilities. YouTube Music is rolling out seasonal recaps similar to the annual ones by Spotify. Starting with a spring edition, users will get a personalized rundown of their top artists, songs, albums, and playlists, and you have the option of sharing your recap with your friends. Next, Alexa helping with your laundry. GE's newest washer has the Amazon voice assistant built in, providing what GE calls a more personalized and smarter experience. The $1,300 set also includes a dryer, but only the washer has Alexa. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. And some would say, yay, more stuff to break. Yes, that's true. But why would only the, the only washer has Alexa? The dryer does not. I don't, I don't know. I guess. And did, and did we just wake up everybody's <laughs> virtual assistants this morning? Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we'll be we have, a little quieter. We have an unwritten rule that we don't do that before 6 o'clock, so we apologize. Yes, sorry about that. I forgot. Time now is only 517, not 6 yet. We'll check in with Stephen Cavazza. Hey, Stephen. Yes. Which sounds better than, hey, Siri. No, it does. Yes. Uh, but, you know, I would also say, when are they going to get uh, something to iron your clothes? That'd be great. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> Convenience. All right. Well, uh, good news is so there, you're not really going to find anything that's going to cause any inconvenience if you are traveling here off 37 at Fair Avenue. We're going to start with that drive around town. Things are looking fine from these shots at Transguide. If you're just waking up with us, uh, things are great here. But the big problem, we have uh, something completely different situation that's developing right there at 35 at Walsham. Wow, uh, it is just a little bit past five this morning. We've seen this just get progressively worse. This is a crash involving an 18 wheeler in another vehicle. We know the driver of that other vehicle was taken to the hospital in critical condition and uh, Katrina Weber has been live out there throughout the morning uh, and it could be a while before we see this wrap up because investigators are on the scene trying to determine how this crash happened, but you can see it is leading to some major issues. There are 
along 35 at Walsham. So make sure you pack your patients or find an alternative route. I've been doing the same thing here on our map, but we're going to start with that buildup that we are seeing in the southbound lanes of 35 near Eisenhower. Now, if you are traveling in those southbound lanes, try to get off on Randolph a little bit earlier and you can avoid that mess, but hopefully we'll have some better news as the morning does go on. We're going to start with a, uh, get a, also get a wide look at the map right now. That metro area just showing more green than anything. So some relief there for anybody that does have to travel in the next few moments heading into San Antonio. Haven't had a chance to show you those inbound times. We're just about green across the board, so no need to rush if your destination is the Alamo City. But back here 35 at Walsham, it's not been a good morning, but yesterday we also had a number of crashes that were reported as well. So it's just been a busy day for those first responders, guys. Yes, it has. All right, so with Saharan dust around, it's yep. almost like adding a filter to your your camera for those sunrises and sunsets, Mike. Yeah, pretty pictures. <laughs> yes, indeed. And a lot of folks took a picture. Now, this really, it, it doesn't, doesn't have anything to do with the, the Saharan dust as far as the clouds out there. It was nice, helped to block out some of the sun. But yeah, you see that orange glow right there along the uh, the horizon, and it, that's going to intensify. If you don't have a lot of clouds by, which we're not going to have by sunset time, then yes, the sunset is going to be enhanced because of that Saharan dust. It is going to be sticking around a bit more later on today. Clouds starting off this morning, and uh, speaking of which, the uh, Saharan dust, it, it will... And let me run this back through here. It is going to be sticking around again today. Looks like we're going to get kind of an extra bit of it coming in here. So if you thought it was bad yesterday, this model does have it somewhat worse later on today. And then it's going to start to thin out somewhat as we go on into the weekend. But then looking upstream, there's another batch of it, which is going to be coming across the Caribbean. And this goes into the first part of next week. And then by the middle of next week, it looks like we're going to have another bout of some of the uh, Saharan dust hanging around here. So not necessarily the best news as far as that goes. Temperatures in the mid and upper 70s around the area right now. Obviously a lot of clouds, some sunshine right throughout mid morning hours. We'll make it up into the 80s, 90 at noon. And then later on today, it's going to be kind of breezy. Wind out of the southeast, 10, 15, 20 miles per hour. And we will hit 99 for a high temperature today. So the nice break that we had from the triple digits yesterday is just a thing of the past. And once again, that high, which is centered over the uh, Tennessee Valley right now, is pretty much in control of our weather. And this thing is just going to kind of shift in on top of us. And this is keeping all the activity well up there in the northern portion of the United States where those upper level wind lines are closer together. That would be what you refer to as the jet stream. That's where all the activity is. This thing is just this big dome sitting on top of us. So that's not letting anything change underneath it. The atmosphere pushes down and that's why things are so hot. Now, some thinking by next week is that as it kind of works its way back off to the east a little bit, we will get more of an easterly flow. Although, as I say that, I remember saying that about a week ago and now that did come true yesterday as far as a little bit more of an easterly flow coming on in here. But again, that's the uh, the hope and the thinking as of right now for late next week that we do perhaps get something coming in here from the Gulf of Mexico. Notice the operative word in that sentence was perhaps 90 today at noon, mostly sunny skies. What I'm alluding to is there's not any changes in the forecast. 100 for a high temperature today, mostly sunny, and it is going to be hazy. And then we go into the weekend. A lot going on this weekend. Of course, Father's Day on Sunday. And yes, that is the 19th, but of course, the Juneteenth holiday is on Monday. But hot temperatures. So celebrating this weekend and do anything outside, do it early in the morning. It's weird how this timed out, Mike. You've returned from the beach where things were fairly pleasant. And now we've seen another spike in temperatures around here. <laughs> Is there any potential correlation? <laughs> you, know, you know, it's funny. It's <laughs> when I was at the grocery store yesterday uh -huh. and one of the ladies there said, you know, they blame you for the weather. I was like, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's funny is we didn't we didn't say anything while you were gone. We're saying it right here in no, front of you. No, We also give you credit when it's nice. <laughs> well, we do that, yes. too. All in all right in front of you to your face. What, 523, 70? Seven degrees. And coming up next <laughs> in your morning spotlight, <laughs> Dolly Parton gives money for medical research. Plus, Denzel Washington teams up with Dakota Fanning again. A big donation from Dolly Parton plus actor Bradley Cooper talks about recovering from drug addiction. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute.
I think we all want to get back to normal, whatever that is, and that would be a great shot in the arm, wouldn't it? Dolly Parton helped make a lot of shots in the arm possible when she donated a million dollars in 2020 to COVID-19 research, some of which funded Moderna's vaccine. Now the music legend has donated another million dollars to Vanderbilt University Medical Center for research into pediatric infectious diseases, including the coronavirus. Bradley Cooper is crediting a fellow actor with helping him recover from drug and alcohol addiction. Cooper appeared on Smartless, a podcast co-hosted by Will Arnett, who shared an apartment with Cooper early in their careers. On the podcast, Cooper said, Will took that risk of having that hard conversation with me, and that put me on a path of deciding to change my life. It truly was Will Arnett. He is the reason. Buy it with my own money. Denzel Washington rescued Dakota Fanning in 2004's Man on Fire. Now they appear ready to reunite. Deadline reports Fanning is set to star opposite Washington in The Equalizer 3. The first two Equalizer movies have grossed a total of $383 million worldwide. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, an important recall for millions of Ford vehicles that can roll away even though they are in park. Plus, why production of infant formula has stopped once again at that Abbott facility in Michigan. And can a toddler suffer from depression or a five-year-old experience mental illness? Ahead on GMSA, therapists answer the question on how young is too young to seek emotional help for your child. Making headlines this morning, a record-setting heat wave continues in much of the U.S. today while powerful storms threaten other areas of our country. And taking a look outside with live cam, this is the morning after the nice little break we had yesterday uh, with the, all that cloud cover. However, we are told don't get used to that. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is June 16th. Mike is back and so is the heat. We're not necessarily drawing a correlation <laughs> there, but it's just fun to talk about. Well, but you've mentioned that a few times already this yes. morning. So isn't it interesting, though, when we talk about how yesterday's 95 degrees was cool? It was a treat. Yeah, it was actually a pleasure. Yeah. When was the last time you said 95 was cool? But anyway, it was compared to the day. But yes, sir. But we are glad you're back. Yeah. Want to make that crystal clear. Welcome back. Beside, despite the heat. No, 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 no strings attached. We're glad. <laughs> anyway, thank, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, <laughs> we've got our morning clouds hanging around here. They will be breaking up. They're not going to be sticking around as much as what was the case yesterday. 78 degrees right now. The normal average low temperature 73. Do the math there. And of course, dew points at 72 degrees, which means there's a lot of humidity out there this morning. Wind out of the south primarily about 11 miles per hour. And we're going to be seeing a breeze today, 10, 15, 20 mile per hour winds. 80 is what it feels like when you factor in the temperature as well as the humidity. 78 down around Pleasanton, 82, both Castorville as well as in New Braunfels. Mold at least is on the light side. The updated count is going to be coming out in a couple of hours, of course. And throughout the rest of today, yep, we are going to be up there again today, 100. And of course, on top of that, yesterday we had a lot of Saharan dust. We're going to have a lot of it hanging around here today. Then that is going to at least for a few days kind of dissipate somewhat. The heat, though, is not going to be dissipating. We're going to be sticking around with triple digit temperatures once again throughout the foreseeable future. A look at the long holiday weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, still big problems on the northeast side? Yeah, I wish I had better news to report this morning, Mike. Let's get a look. 35 in Walsham. It has been a major mess out there for drivers this Thursday morning. You can see we have plenty of flashing lights out there and, of course, a lot of traffic. And that is because we are watching investigators trying to determine how this crash occurred. It involves an 18 wheel 18 wheeler in another vehicle and you can see uh, we've been talking about this for now about an hour, but this crash was reported a, a little bit earlier in the morning and you can see it's causing major delays for anybody that is heading down 35. As we show you right there on the map, that's in the southbound lanes, not far from Eisenhower and Walsham Road. We are looking at alternative routes. Now one route you can take as a detour would be exiting Randolph to Eagle Crest Boulevard. You'll then hit Walsham Road. What you'll do then is take a right on the Eisenhower and I've mapped it out for you there in the blue. Now you may hit a few stoplights along the way, as I always like to mention, but keep in mind it beats hitting those flashing lights that we are seeing out there on the roadways. We want to make sure that we give first responders plenty of room. Now let's get that wide look at the map and thankfully nothing else to report at this hour. We're going to have to track things closely, but someone that's been tracking this crash as well as Katrina Weber. She is live there this morning. Katrina, you said this is going to take a little while to clear. 
Yeah, it seems like it still is going on. Uh, we can tell you that in the last half hour, the pickup that ran into the back of this 18-wheeler was towed away. Right now, we have a King Kong wrecker on hand, and it looks like a crew that seems to be examining uh, that 18-wheeler. Now, this happened earlier this morning, uh, about 4 o'clock or so. Police tell us that that 18-wheeler was already stopped on the side of the road. It had broken down. For some reason, the driver of a pickup ran into the back of that. The pickup was lodged underneath the back of the 18-wheeler. The firefighters had to cut the driver out of the pickup. We understand he did suffer some life-threatening injuries. He was taken to a hospital, and that is the last word we had on his condition from police. Uh, ever since then, this has been the situation with that wreck off to the outside lanes of the highway. The two inside lanes are still open. Traffic is moving, but it is backed up uh, because of the, the need for them to condense it to those two lanes. And uh, this is going to be the situation, uh, as far as we can tell, until they do get the rest of this wreckage cleared up. Uh, we, uh, we, again, we have not heard an update on that driver's condition. The last word we had was that he had suffered life-threatening injuries. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you for the update. More from her to come. Well, it's way too hot in much of the U.S. today. However, high temperatures are not the only problem. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, another concern is the risk of storms knocking out power. I've heard this is a thousand year event. A dangerous heat wave continues in much of the U.S. Yellowstone National Park is flooded. Unusually high temperatures are melting an unusually late heavy snowfall. That's coupled with heavy rain. It's a Yellowstone town and it lives and dies by tourism. Wildfires are the concern in places like Arizona and California. In St. Louis, this pavement buckled from the heat. Some animals are suffering too. She has no idea what's going on. The Animal Humane Society in Minnesota says these cats were crammed inside a hot car at a rest stop. At least 16 U.S. cities hit or tied heat records yesterday. Today, the National Weather Service predicts more dangerous temperatures in these areas. Note the triple digits in the southwest. Power grids in some areas are struggling to keep up. And storms are causing additional outages. For the last three days, we haven't had power. So we are staying in a hotel nearby. This is how hot it is inside your house? Yeah, it's reading about 89, 88 right now. Today, more than 100,000 customers across the U.S. had no power. Now, forecasters say severe storms are moving through the lower Great Lakes region. Some of those areas are still under heat advisories. I'm walking around in my bathing suit. <laughs> I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Well, speaking of storms, Abbott has halted baby formula production at its Sturgis, Michigan plant after severe storms led to flooding in that city, including inside the plant. They can't catch a break. The state, but Abbott says it will now have to clean and re-sanitize the plant. Formula production had just restarted less than two weeks ago after that month's long closure that contributed to a nationwide shortage. It came after an FDA inspection found bacteria that can be deadly to infants. As for the most recent closure, the company will do comprehensive testing with an independent third party before reopening. Production and distribution of new product will likely be delayed for a few weeks. Environmental law groups are taking legal action against the Biden administration. It's an attempt to stop oil and gas companies from drilling new wells on federal lands. The environmental groups filed suit against the Bureau of Land Management after more than 3,500 oil and drilling permits were approved in Wyoming and New Mexico. The groups say the permits violate laws that protect endangered species and the environment. Meanwhile, Biden has recently encouraged fossil fuel companies to ramp up their capacity in light of soaring gas prices. Just yesterday, the president sent letters to seven oil refinery companies urging them to take immediate action to increase the supply of gasoline, diesel and other refined product. Industrial conglomerate Caterpillar Incorporated is moving its global headquarters from suburban Chicago to North Texas. Caterpillar says the move from Deerfield, Illinois to its existing office space in Irving will begin later this year. The company, which makes construction equipment, among other products, is one of the 30 companies whose stock price influences the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Governor Greg Abbott hailed the move but added the company is not currently receiving any incentives from the state of Texas for the relocation. Time now, 538 and 77 degrees for now. Still ahead, Ford issuing a recall for some of its vehicles that can just roll away even though they are in park.
and also next a closer look at how most people will be affected by the Fed raising interest rates. Outside with live cam. Will we hit 100 today after a break from the extreme temperatures yesterday? We'll talk to Mike Ostrage, who's back with us right here on GMSA. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 541. The Federal Reserve has raised interest rates once again this year, and this time by more than half of a percentage point. So how does this impact you? CNN's Cole Higgins has a closer look. Taking aggressive action to help tame historic inflation. I do not expect moves of this size to be common. For the first time since 1994, the Federal Reserve raising interest rates by a remarkable three quarters of a percentage point. Chairman Jerome Powell making the announcement following the Fed's policy meeting Wednesday. This continues our approach of expeditiously moving our policy rate up to more normal levels and it will help ensure that longer term inflation expectations remain well anchored at 2%. The move comes after May's hotter than expected inflation report and Wall Street's growing call for tougher action from the Fed to keep prices under control. My colleagues and I are acutely aware that high inflation imposes significant hardship, especially on those least able to meet the higher costs of essentials like food, housing and transportation. But that strong response to help the economy has some economists worried. Former Fed Chair Ben Bernanke cautioning future financial conditions are hard to forecast. I think a recession is possible. Economists are very bad at predicting recessions. But I think the Fed has a, a decent chance, a reasonable chance of achieving a what uh, Jay Powell calls a softish landing, either no recession or a very mild recession to bring inflation down. Financial experts say higher interest rates could be felt widely when it comes to consumer borrowing, from credit cards and mortgages to car loans. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Cole Higgins. 543, still 77 degrees. San Antonio Humane Society is up next to talk about a pet that wants to be adopted today. Aww. Kim's here from the San Antonio Humane Society and this little boy, look at how good with the floppy ears, who is this? This is Professor, so Professor is a two month old retriever mix, um, definitely gonna be a good size big dog, probably he, running partner maybe? Yeah, he yeah. looks almost a little more retriever-ish, almost yes. golden retriever-ish uh, yes. than his sister, but sister. Oh, yeah. gonna be a sweetie yeah. and probably a you know, decent size like yes. we were talking about, mm -hmm. 30, 40 pounds, something yep. like that. Yep, lots of toys. A couple sure. of tennis balls, kids in the yes. backyard. Yes, maybe Everybody's you want to go for a good run when yep. it's cooler. So, absolutely. All right, what you got going on? So, we are hiring. We need people to come and you love animals, you want to work for us. Go on our website. We are hiring for multiple positions from PR to development to um, all of our vet assistants, everything. So we're looking for, for people that want to hang out. And again, if you us. are an animal and you want to get hands on yes. with the animals, yeah. and that's fine. Trainers, but kennels, staff, anything. If you, I mean, yeah. don't really want to be around the animals at all, you can be in the office, like yes. you said, but PR could be the, the website yes. stuff. The Things like that. Filing, HR, anything like that. Accounting, okay. we're looking for people that want to come. So we definitely are come hang out even with the animals with not so and a great way team. to you know great place to work and great yeah. way to, to, to help out the community place to work. with adopting yes. all these yeah. so if you'd like more information about any employment opportunities over there at the san antonio humane society or to adopt little professor 48 to 4 fredericksburg road 226-7461 thank you dear thank you very cute and in your morning consumer headlines, Ford is recalling 2.9 million cars and SUVs that could roll away even when placed in park. The vehicles are in are the 2013 to 2019 Escape, so 2013 to 2018 C Max, 2013 to 2016 Fusion, and 2013 to 2021 Transit Connect. The transmission on the affected vehicles may not really be in the park position, even though the shifter position indicates the vehicle was shifted to park. The National Highway Safety Administration says drivers have gotten out only to have their vehicle roll, increasing the risk of injury or crash. The safety regulator says it received six reports of property damage and four reports of injuries potentially related to that problem, but no deaths. Some of the nation's largest real estate companies are laying off employees. Redfin says it's reducing its workforce by about 8%. The company says demand for services in May was 17% below expectations. Meanwhile, Compass says it's cutting about 450 of its 4,500 employees. The company also pausing hiring, expansion, and mergers and acquisitions until the end of 2022. 
These layoffs come as interest rates increase, causing the prices of homes to go up. And time now, 548. Stephen's been following a crash all morning, but how are the rest of the roads looking out there? They're not too bad. I do want to show other drivers what they can expect on the commute. 37 at Fair Avenue is looking pretty fair out there, but we are seeing some issues starting to pop up. Uh, a lot of stalls that are being reported. And just as a reminder, check your vehicle before you get out on the road. We know a lot of people have some summer travel plans, so just make sure you're fully gassed up. Tires are inflated and everything is working properly before you get out there. And if you encounter a stall vehicle, you know what to do. Move over over and slow down. That is the law, but elsewhere looking pretty fine right now. But I did get an update from Katrina on this crash that we've talked about here off 35 at Walsham. You can see it is still a mess out there. Now cops, she says the police are starting to move out and both trucks have actually been towed away. However, you can see there at that trans guide camera, all the lanes are not fully open just yet, but hopefully in a few minutes we'll have a better update at six. But right now still a little bit of a mess out there. Uh, taking you right to the map. If you are still trying to figure out how to navigate that, it's in the southbound lanes of Eisenhower. You can exit uh, Randolph here, get onto Eagle Crest Boulevard, then get on the walls and turn right onto Eisenhower to avoid that stretch of red. But as I mentioned, as Katrina just mentioned to me that that truck, the trucks have been towed away from the scene and we could be seeing some good progress here in the next few moments. But right now the travel times also not looking bad green across the board. If you're traveling into the Alamo City from any of these communities, so no need to rush. Just remember to follow the rules of the road. And if you see those flashing lights, you got to move over and slow down guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Another nice cloudy yep. picture. So many people took pictures of clouds yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> this was so great because we haven't seen afternoon clouds in the longest time, and that helped keep temperatures down. So it's kind of a uh, a big thank you, I guess, to the cloud cover that we had out there, which kept us at 95 instead of 100. But we're going to be back to that. So we've got our morning clouds, and you can sort of see it there off in the distance looking off by the airport. 78 degrees right now. We are five above normal. Should be at 73. Normal high temperature being 93. So yes, we were still above normal yesterday, but at least we were closer to it than the, the triple digits. But <clears throat> excuse me, everybody's in the mid and upper 70s right now. And the humidity, when you get these numbers, you know, seven above 70 is bad enough. Then you start looking at 74 for dew point temperatures. Uh, Seguin, Stinson, Pleasanton, that's where it's really... Uh, the best ways I describe, you know, fog up your glasses, kind of wet towel, steam bath. However, if you want to say a tropical rainforest kind of humidity when you step outside. Morning clouds this morning, and we will have more sunshine, obviously, later on then. That puts us into the mid-upper 80s, 90 by noon, and then we are going to be up into the... Uh, triple digit range again today. So this will be day number 15 so far this year that we've hit triple digits officially out there at the airport. Wind is going to be out of the uh, south southeast. Bit of a breeze, not overly windy today. All right, here's a picture of the uh, satellite shot and notice how pretty much first of all, everything is right here along the northern tier of the United States. We're talking about some flooding up around uh, Yellowstone and then also severe weather going through the Great Lakes and that path that's that's where all the activity is, nothing down here. Then looking at the tropics right now, there is nothing going on as of right now. The Hurricane Center is kind of keeping an eye right here around Central America and says in the next five days, maybe a little bit of activity trying to get brewing down here. The hope would be if anything does brew that we would have enough of a flow coming in here off the Gulf of Mexico that that could come in our direction again. This is just sheer hoping and fingers crossed and everything else as of right now, because right now there's nothing going on anywhere to bring about any significant changes for us. At least the Saharan dust, which is going to be around today, is going to start to go away for a couple of days. 90 at noon today, mostly sunny skies. High temperature today makes it up to 100, mostly sunny. And again, we are going to have that nice little haze from all that dust out there. Tomorrow, same situation, but at least Saharan dust is going to go away. It looks like we may get another somewhat of a, I don't know if I'm going to call it a surge of it, but another batch of it coming in by the middle of next week. But triple digits all the way through the weekend. Of course, Father's Day on Sunday. Don't forget to do your shopping. Yes. Did you have a list by chance? You, uh, do you want to you know, tell everybody? I, I don't, but I, I was telling Justin and uh, folks yesterday, day before yesterday, the car dial is already kind of picked over oh, yeah. at my HEB. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and so. then, of course, the long holiday weekend, too, this weekend. Yeah, including so. Juneteenth. But That's take right. it easy if you're outside. Obviously. Yes, sir. Good advice. Too hot there.
Time now, 553 and 76 degrees for now. Let's take a look at all your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, 988, Fireball 8. Daily four numbers, 1017, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 16, 20, 24, 29, 34. And Lotto Texas, 12, 15, 18, 21, 28, 50. Your Powerball number is 19, 28, 41, 42, 51. Powerball 7, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up, we're following the breaking news overnight. A top ISIS leader captured in Syria. What we're learning about the ground raid to get him. Also this morning, the families of two American military veterans missing in Ukraine calling for them to be brought home. There are unconfirmed reports saying they may have been captured by Russian forces. This as President Biden announces another $1 billion in military aid for Ukraine. Much more from the region ahead. That coming up right here on GMA. And ahead in the next hour, Team SA, Astros Rangers going into game three, tied at one game apiece. We'll tell you who came out on top yesterday and which fan base gets bragging rights at work this morning. And we'll have the very latest on a big rig crash that happened a few hours ago on 35 near Walsham. It has already led to issues for many morning commuters. And checking trans sky, 35 at Walsham is looking really good right there. Hopefully the situation has improved. We'll check in with Stephen Cavazos coming up. Cleanup underway after an apartment fire on the city's north side. We're going to tell you if anyone was hurt. And your Facebook could soon be getting a big redesign. We'll explain why. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 76 degrees for now, but we are going to hit the triple digits once again. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Rise and shine. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, the 16th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a chance to enjoy the small break <laughs> that we had yesterday. Every little bit helps. And Mike says we officially did not hit yep. 100 degrees yesterday. Here in town, now of course, down to the southwest and west along the Rio Grande Valley, there were a lot of triple digit readings, but mm -hmm. we hit 95 officially. So just within two degrees of the uh, the normal high temperature. Wow. So yeah, it's like, a wow. nice break. And, and we had some clouds out there. Everybody was just, you know, it was nice except to walking across at our, uh, our grocery store where they just resurfaced and put down more um, wow. seal coating on it. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, yeah, oh, goodness gracious. It's like walking through the oven going across the grocery store parking lot. Lots of clouds hanging out here this morning. And yeah, yesterday, 95 degrees. There were some of those triple digits from Pleasanton, Hondo, and off to the west and down to the uh, southwest. The warmest uh, reading on this map, of course, Catula at 104. But today, it is going to be hotter. And we've got a very hot start this morning. Five above normal right now. 78 degrees, 77 in Pleasanton, 78 also. New Braunfels, 80 right now. Right now, and these are the actual air temperatures up there at Canyon Lake and then factor in some of that humidity and there's there's plenty of it out there this morning. Mold is on the low side and we are going to go from the mid upper 70s this morning. We'll see some sunshine obviously later on this morning. Kind of the usual scenario, except a lot more sunshine this afternoon instead of keeping those clouds hanging around here. 90 today at noon and then yep, triple digit temperatures later on also. So we get rid of the clouds, but we're keeping the Saharan dust around today. So we are going to have that nice orangish glow out there. The sunset's going to be very, very pretty thanks to that, but you'll be able to see that sort of along the horizon today, that kind of orangish shade to the, uh, the sky out there. At least that's going to be going away temporarily over the next couple of days. Will the hot temperatures go away? Details on the long holiday weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stephen Cavazos, Traffic Authority, what's up? Better news at 6 a.m., Mike. We are getting a shot at 35 at Walsham. You can see nothing to talk about from what we are seeing out there, but if you've been with us, we have been tracking that major crash that led to some major delays out in that uh, area, but we know that this involved an 18-wheeler and a pickup truck. We're going to talk to Katrina Weber, who has some information for us in just a moment, but you can see we're not spotting any 
any major delays. So that's very different than what we saw probably around 430 when we saw a lot of flashing lights out there. But 35 southbound near Eisenhower, where it was reported by TxDOT. Now we're still detecting that stretch of yellow out there, so indicating a slight slowdown, but nothing too bad as what we were seeing earlier. So we don't think you're going to need this detour, but uh, just keep in mind that this has just wrapped up and we're going to talk to Katrina in just some few moments to get some information, but elsewhere not finding any other issues to report at this hour, but things can quickly change. We know this is the hour where more people get out on the roadways, but as I mentioned, Katrina it has been live there throughout the morning. Katrina, what's the latest? Well, good morning. That's a whole different sight out here. It looks just like a regular morning commute on 35. No sign of that crash that we had here all morning. But it was a jarring sight for people who passed by here just for 30, 45 minutes ago. Let me give you a look at the video so you can see exactly what happened. Now, there was an 18-wheeler that police tell us was already on the side of the road. It was broken down. For some reason, the driver of a pickup came along. The pickup slammed into the back of that big rig and then got lodged underneath it. Firefighters had to come and use their jaws of life to get the driver of the pickup out of that truck. They rushed him to the hospital with what police tell us were life-threatening injuries. In the meantime, investigators were here. They were doing a very thorough investigation of this crash. They had the uh, outside lanes of 35 South shut down for hours. This happened after two, about 2.15 this morning, and it was shut down right until uh, before 6 o'clock. About 5.45 is when things finally opened up. So again, we don't know exactly what went wrong behind the wheel for that pickup driver, but he did suffer life-threatening injuries. That investigation now over and traffic flowing normally here on I-35 South. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, the search is on for the suspects involved in an overnight shooting on the west side. It happened around 1 at the Vista Meadows Apartments on Callahan Road near Culebra. Now, police tell us a victim was pulling into the complex when the suspects in another vehicle pulled up and started firing shots, hitting the victim in the arm. Those suspects took off. The victim was taken to the hospital. Cleanup underway this morning after a fire at a north side apartment complex. This happened just before nine last night at the villas of Castle Hills on Jackson Keller near Blanco. Crews say heavy flames were shooting from the roof of one of the buildings. They were able to get the fire knocked out quickly without anyone getting hurt. Ten people were forced to leave their homes. They were placed in other units at that same complex. The cause of the fire is unclear, but at this time firefighters fires Ray say it does not look suspicious. And now to an active Amber Alert that you might have received on your phone here. The search is on for 13-year-old Kiana Braxton. She was last seen Tuesday afternoon in the town of Honeygrove. That is northeast of Dallas. She has brown eyes and was last seen wearing blonde-colored braids and an orange and white cheerleading outfit. If you have any information that can help, you are asked to call the Honeygrove Police Department, and that number is on your screen. That's 903-378-2222. Back here at home, San Antonio police are still looking for a missing 15-year-old girl. Justine Renee Molina was last seen a week ago today on Avondale Avenue. That's on the southeast side near Hot Wells and South New Braunfels. She's five feet tall, has brown hair and brown eyes. Last seen wearing stud earrings, a pink necklace, gray leggings, and a yellow long sleeve shirt. Police say she has a medical condition that requires a doctor's care. If you know where she might be, you're asked to call the SAPD Missing Persons Unit at 210-207-7660. Today, the Texas Legislative Committee investigating the Uvalde shooting will hold a hearing, and it is set to take place in Uvalde. They are expected to hear testimony from law enforcement and other people who were impacted. Witnesses are expected to be questioned in private. Right now, it's not clear how long this particular investigation will last. We are going to be following this story all day, all day long, both on air and on lay line. Two U.S. citizens who traveled to Ukraine to volunteer as fighters against Russian forces have been missing for a week and are now fear captured. Family members say the two men from Alabama were last in contact with their families June 8th and did not return from a mission in eastern Ukraine. So far, a U.S. State Department spokesperson says the reports are unconfirmed. If the pair have been captured by the Russians, it'd be the first confirmed uh, evidence of U.S. citizens being taken as prisoners of war in the conflict that began back in February. White House National Security spokesperson John Kirby said that if the reports are true, the United States will do everything we can to get them back.
A man accused of attempting to kill a U.S. Supreme Court justice last week has been formally indicted. 26-year-old Nicholas Roski faces one count of attempting to assassinate a justice of the United States. And authorities say that he flew from California to Maryland to target Justice Brett Kavanaugh, believing that he would side with Second Amendment decisions that would loosen gun control laws. Roski was arrested near Kavanaugh's home after he reportedly called authorities on himself. He said he was upset over the shooting in Uvalde, as well as the pending abortion and Second Amendment rulings. Roski has been in jail since his arrest and is due back in court on June 22nd. He faces a maximum sentence of life in federal prison if convicted. In your morning consumer headlines, rising interest rates. The Fed boosting a key rate by three quarters of one percent, the biggest single hike in nearly 30 years. Fed Chair Jerome Powell says the same kind of increase could happen at next month's Fed meeting if inflation does not slow down. And stock markets rallying after the announcement. The S&P snapping a five-day losing streak and closing up 1.5%. The Nasdaq finished 2.5% higher and the Dow closed up 1%. But things may turn around at the opening bell. Overnight futures pointing to a lower open today. We're going to have more on the current state of the economy coming up a little later on GMSA. Are you looking for work? A career fair is happening later today at the Norris Conference Center here in San Antonio. It's located at the Park North Shopping Center at 618 Northwest Loop 410. Some of the employers that will be there include Pronto Insurance, First Option Workforce Solutions, Spectrum, and Valet Living. And some of the positions that need to be filled are in customer service, manufacturing, and retail. It's happening from 11 this morning till 2 o'clock this afternoon. And time now, 6.09 and 76 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you about the design changes that could be coming to Facebook. And the latest on the growing concern on Wall Street about a looming recession. Outside with live cam, a break from the extreme heat yesterday. All that appears to be coming to an end today. Thursday forecast is coming up with Mike, who is back from vacation. Welcome back. It's 613 and now to the economy and growing concern on Wall Street about a looming recession. The focus remains on inflation and gas prices and President Biden suggesting he may take new action. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning with inflation, the number one issue of concern for most Americans and no relief in sight when it comes to gas prices. New reaction to the letter President Biden sent yesterday to big oil executives blaming their corporate greed along with the war in Ukraine for the record high prices at the pump. The president warned the executives he could invoke emergency powers to increase output at refineries, writing, quote, profit margins well above normal being passed directly onto American families are not acceptable. But the White House is not sharing how the president might use his executive powers. We are calling on them to do the right thing, to be patriots here uh, and not to use the war uh, as an excuse. Oil refinery capacity is down by 3 million barrels a day since 2020. But the American Petroleum Institute blames Biden's green energy push, claiming the administration's, quote, misguided policy agenda shifting away from domestic oil and natural gas has compounded inflationary pressures. And as for those record profits, oil companies are saying they're making up for big losses during the pandemic, like the $22 billion loss ExxonMobil reported in 2020. Any revenues that are being made right now are being made up to uh, balance out losses from back in 20 and 21, and also to now begin reinvesting. And there's new evidence of the toll inflation is taking on the economy. Retail spending unexpectedly dropped last month. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. Facebook reportedly making changes to mimic TikTok, a leaked memo obtained by The Verge, reveals Facebook plans to change its algorithm to feature more short-form videos. Plans also include reuniting Facebook and Messenger as one app to mimic TikTok's messaging abilities. 
And time now, 6.15, time to check back with Stephen Cavazos. I'm not TikToking over here. I don't even know how to use that. <laughs> but uh, we are keeping it real when it comes to the traffic. If you get the reels drift, you know what I was referencing. But otherwise, 37 at Fair Avenue, nothing to talk about there. But 35 at Pine, now that is, uh, area has kind of been a little bit busier. 35, that is. We saw a crash that was reported earlier. Katrina Weber was out there. We know that crash involved an 18-wheeler and a pickup truck. They just cleared that, but it did take crews several hours to investigate and to determine exactly how it happened. And we're going to have more on that throughout the day. But thankfully, at this hour, this early in the morning, nothing major to talk about. That crash did clear in the southbound lanes of Eisenhower, not far from Walsham. Uh, we did have some alternative routes because it did lead to some delays, but thankfully, not seeing that anymore. We do detect some stalls out there, so just make sure you check your vehicles before you get out on the roadways as a friendly reminder. And if you are planning on traveling into San Antonio, we have these travel times for you right now. It's a 28-minute drive time heading in from 37 northbound in Pleasanton, 30 minutes on Highway 90 eastbound coming in from Castroville and 60 minutes if you're traveling up from Lytle. So no problems there, but back here on the roadways, looks like we have a stall there at 37 at Hot Wheels. So just as a reminder, move over and slow down, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. I felt so lucky that not only did I witness the cloud cover, I, there was a slight breeze for a moment yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And the breeze didn't really feel like, as Mark always puts it, the hair dryer. Right. Not yeah. yesterday. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. But I mean, still we had a lot of humidity hanging around the afternoon, so there was you know that going on. But um, today, yeah, you know we did only hit what only I say 95 degrees, not 100, but we're going to be back up into the triple digits again later on today. We're starting off 77 right now in town, some uh, mid to lower 70s in portions of the hill country and that top number there dew point 72, which means there's a bunch of humidity out there this morning and we've got well some pretty pictures thanks to all of this uh, Saharan dust out there. That was an absolutely gorgeous shot and a lot of folks love to take pictures of not only the Saharan dust and the beautiful sunsets, but also the clouds that we had sticking around here yesterday. So that was a well, a nice little nice little break and that helped to keep temperatures down. Speaking of the uh, the dust and it does look like we are going to be not only seeing it again today, but also kind of an extra surge of it coming in here later on today. So it will obviously make for pretty sunsets, but also that orangey look to the sky throughout the day. Then that's going to start to sort of taper off a little bit going on into the weekend. But in behind that coming in here for next week, it looks like we, there is another plume of Sahara and dust that's going to be coming on in here by the middle part of next week. So we keep hot temperatures around then we've got the dust on top of that and no rain. 78 degrees at 8 o'clock this morning will already be up to 80 at 9 o'clock and then add 10 to that by noon. More sunshine mixed in with the clouds. The usual situation yesterday was kind of the, the anomaly, the rarity, if you will, like we said, because we had those clouds sticking around and then we are going to be hitting 100 later on today. Winds out of the south about 10, 15 miles per hour. A bit of a breeze at times. At least the dew point, the humidity, will start to drop down somewhat later on today. So we're not just going to have those outrageously high heat index readings later on today. Satellite, we've got, well, you saw some clearing yesterday, and then there's the low clouds. It's kind of hard to see that darker shade of gray that moves on in here. But the thing to take, uh, take note of when you look at the country is all of the activity is up there to the north. They had the flooding around Yellowstone, severe weather going through Wisconsin and the, uh, the Great Lakes. And then there's another system coming in here in the Pacific Northwest, but all that moves straight west to east, and that's because of this high, which is pretty much covering the southern half, almost two thirds of the country, and that keeps the uh, the track, if you will, the jet stream track up there to the north of us, and that keeps everything further up there to the north. Doesn't allow anything to change around here puts a big dome on top of us, pushes down in the atmosphere, and this is the unwelcome house guest, and this is why we are so hot. Now, the hope is by next week that this is going to be just far enough to the east, and we get more of an easterly flow coming in here off the Gulf of Mexico. The hope would be that there could be some sort of a disturbance out there to at least give us a chance for some rain. Again, that's strictly a hope right now. 90 at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature today is going to make it up to 100. That will be day number 15, just in case you are keeping track. And of course, it is going to be hazy. Then tomorrow and going into the weekend, we won't have as much Saharan dust around here. So that's a nice little benefit. Of course, Sunday, Father's Day, and we get an extra day then to enjoy the weekend with the yeah. Juneteenth holiday on Monday. 
but nothing changes with temperatures. I wonder if any of our viewers at this point hear our extended forecast and just didn't do the whole na 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 <laughs> thing. You know, they just don't want to hear the truth. <laughs> Here, let's do it. I'll try and speak no evil about it. You see, and you hear no evil, so. <laughs> or hundreds, if you will. That's true. You can be in denial. That's okay. We can be. Mm -hmm. It's a nice place to be. Nine, tw uh, rather six twenty, seventy six degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the Texas showdown in the majors. We're going to tell you if the Astros or the Rangers fans have bragging rights this morning. To workouts and new adventures. You hope the more you give, the less they'll miss. But even if your teen was vaccinated against meningitis in the past, they may be missing vaccination for meningitis B. Although uncommon, up to one in five survivors of meningitis will have long-term consequences. Now, as you're thinking about all the vaccines your teen might need, make sure you ask your doctor if your teen is missing meningitis B vaccination. In the Middle Ages, the remedy for tooth decay was to kiss a donkey. Hurry up! Today, there's a better way to help keep decay away. Act. With fortifying fluoride, it can make teeth up to four times stronger. Excellent. Act. Long live your teeth. Think mom's calling 911? Nope. She's switching her choice cash back category to dining. So she earns more on our backup plan. Delivery. With the Bank of America customized cash rewards card, you just can't stop getting rewarded. In this morning's GMA First Look and ABC News exclusive, a juror in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial gives their impression of the star's testimonies and what led the jury to the groundbreaking verdict, who says a lot of Amber's story didn't add up. He balled up his fists, leaned back, and headbutted me square in the nose. The crying, the facial expressions that she had, the staring at the jury, all of us were very uncomfortable. She would answer one question and she would be crying, and two seconds later she would turn ice cold. Some of us use the expression crocodile tears. I don't know how <laughs> I don't want to do this. <laughs> All that and many more revelations from the juror coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Astros and Rangers, game three up in Arlington yesterday. Both clubs going into this one with one win apiece. Houston would squeak out a win in game two, but that would not be the case for this one. Astros all over the board in the first inning with six runs. Rangers offense went cold for most of the game. The final from Arlington, Strohs win at 9-2. Houston wins a series with Texas two games to one. Next up for the Astros. They return home to take on the Chicago White Sox tomorrow night. Meanwhile, the Rangers will head to Detroit to play Mike Ostrage's Tigers tonight at 610. Oh, time now, 625 and 76 degrees for now. It's still head on GMSA, a knife fight in the downtown area sends one man to the hospital. We're going to have the details. Could your child be too young to seek mental health counseling? We'll hear what one expert says a little later. And one of this morning's top stories, we are staying on top of an overnight crash on I-35. We're going to tell you how it might impact your morning commute. And Transguide right now, 410 at Ingram. Flashing lights on the side of the road. We will try to pinpoint and get more information from Stephen coming up. Outside with live cam, temperatures were much closer to normal around here yesterday, but today we return to abnormal territory. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. <laughs> it is June 16th. I mean, how else do you put it at That's this point, right? That's true. I mean, yesterday, even though normal, it was a treat. You know, it was a nice little break there. Heat of the day. Got in my truck and it only said 93, which is way better than the, what did I say, 1,003 degrees? Yeah. Something like the that. Normal, and that's, right? Yeah, unless you're, again, walking across the grocery store parking lot yesterday. We did have some extra humidity in the afternoon, but mm -hmm. it was nice to have those temperatures down, that yeah. cloud cover, uh, air conditioning didn't get quite quite as much of a workout, but we're going to be back at it again today. We've got all of our kind of hazy clouds out there, so hair and dust is going to be sticking around again today like it has been the past couple of days, especially yesterday. 77 right now. Dew points to 72, which means, yep, a lot of humidity out there. Wind out of the south primarily about 9, 10 miles per hour. 78 here in town. Mid uh, 70s, mid and upper 70s, much of the area, and then some lower 70s portions of the hill country, and everybody's got plenty of humidity. Mold 
cold is on the low side. Update account is going to come out in about an hour, hour or so. And throughout the rest of today, a lot of clouds around this morning and warm, humid. Then later on today, mostly sunny skies. Keep that Saharan dust haze out there. 100 for a high temperature. At least the dust is going to sort of thin out over the next couple of days and still going to be very, very hot though going into the weekend. And that's going to be the situation into next week as far as temperatures. And it also looks like by midweek may get another surge of that uh, Saharan dust coming in here. Details on the long holiday weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, big accident over the northeast side. Gone? Gone. Hey, gone. And uh, right now we are seeing more people out there, Mike. I tend to Bent. The morning is getting going and today really started with some major issues along the northeast side near 35 as Mike was referencing that is cleared out and, and we'll talk to Katrina in just a little while. But 410 at Ingram, we saw this as we went to commercial. Keep in mind, there is some road work that is continuing through that area in both directions, so you have to make sure you watch out for the crews. We know 410 is a pretty busy spot as well, so just make sure you plan your commute accordingly. But thankfully, as we're getting closer to morning rush hour, the big problem that we're now detecting are going to be those stalls. One will bring you right in here is in the eastbound lanes located along I-10, not far from Martin Luther King Drive. So I uh, got to say this again, just reiterate it. Can't say it enough. Check your vehicles before you get out on the roadway because we saw a number of stalls over the last few days. I can't even count on my hand how many there were, but let's go ahead and bring it back to Trans Guide 410 at Malbach US 90 at Gerald McMullen. Thankfully, for the most part, Mark Stephanie, these vehicles are moving without any trouble. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio traffic investigators are trying to find out what went wrong for a man who was behind the wheel of a pickup heading down a northeast side freeway. His truck plowed into the back of an 18 wheeler that was stalled on southbound I-35 near Walsham Road. That crash left him with serious injuries and caused a significant traffic backup. Katrina Weber is there with a the live report. And it looks like a whole different situation now, Katrina. Yeah, it definitely is. You know, based on the way traffic looks now, you might not know anything ever happened, but Drivers who passed by here just an hour ago got quite an eyeful. That pickup was lodged beneath the back end of the 18-wheeler. Police say that firefighters had to cut the driver out of that pickup truck. They say the big rig was already broken down on the side of I-35. For some reason, the pickup driver slammed into the back of it. Police say he suffered life-threatening injuries and was rushed to a hospital. Other drivers, meanwhile, had to slow way down to a crawl to get around this crash scene. Well, that traffic backup began clearing up about 45 minutes ago. That was once police finished their investigation here and were able to get those two vehicles towed away. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, San Antonio police are searching for the person involved in a shooting that happened on the city's west side. We know one man was injured and our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Good morning, Jonathan. What is the latest? Good morning, Stephanie. Well, we are learning the victim involved in the shooting has been taken to University Hospital. We're told he is expected to be okay. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this morning. We know San Antonio police were busy gathering evidence, trying to piece exactly what happened this morning, why a 28 year old man was shot and more importantly, who shot him. We know San Antonio police responded to the 1100 block of Callahan Road around one o'clock. This is the Vista Metal Apartments located near Culebra Road on the city's West side and according to the victim he was pulling into the parking lot of the apartment complex to visit someone when a person driving a white car pulled up and opened fire on him hitting him in the arm now as of right now the victim has not been able to provide a clear or good description to police other than the fact that the gunman was driving in a white car also police say nobody at that apartment complex claims to know the victim but of course this is a situation that is actively under investigation reporting live jonathan Cotto, kset 12 news well, a fight overnight ends with one man in the hospital. It happened at the Soap Factory Apartments on North Santa Rosa, not far from downtown. Investigators say two men were fighting when one of them stabbed the other in the stomach. The victim was taken to the hospital. That suspect has been detained. And happening today, City Council will decide on how some of the districts will change. This comes after the U.S. Census showed a huge population growth, but that growth wasn't seen equally amongst all districts. An advisory committee approved a more evenly distributed map. Only districts 2 and 3 remain unchanged. Also happening today, families of the victims of the Robb Elementary School shooting continue to say their final farewells. 
This morning, 10-year-old Layla Salazar will be buried in Uvalde. Layla's obituary says that she loved dancing and singing and watching the Dallas Cowboys. Her funeral mass will begin at 10 o'clock this morning, followed by a ceremony at Hillcrest Cemetery. The FDA is now expected to authorize emergency use for the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines for kids as young as six months old. Then Saturday, the CDC is expected to vote. Since vaccines rolled out December 15, 2020, almost 72% of the U.S. population is vaccinated. 39% of eligible people are boosted. Children are falling behind when it comes to vaccinations. We spoke with a doctor with University Health. She says it's important for parents to protect their kids from severe cases of COVID. We want to stop the spread. And by stopping the spread, the first foremost way to do that is to administer the vaccine to all of our population, including our young. White House says vaccines should be ready to roll as soon as next week. Metro Health says the best place for parents to get their kids vaccinated would be at their pediatrician's office. If you still need a vaccine, there is a pop up clinic tomorrow evening. It's at the Heat Nightclub on Main Avenue. So we'll have from from 530 to 9 p.m. Metro Health says we'll be taking part of the Take Pride in Your Health celebration. Abbott has halted baby formula production at its Sturgis, Michigan plant after severe storms led to the flooding in the city, including inside the plant. In a statement on Wednesday, Abbott said it will not now have to clean and re-sanitize that plant. Formula production there restarted less than two weeks ago after a months long closure that helped drive a nationwide shortage. It came after a U.S. Food and Drug Administration inspection found bacteria that can be deadly to infants. As for the most recent closure, the company will do comprehensive testing with an independent third party before reopening. Production and distribution of new product will likely be delayed for a few weeks. And the Supreme Court is expected to soon announce its decision on Roe versus Wade. So right now, local foster and adoption agencies are closely monitoring what a change in federal abortion laws could mean for children in our state. The executive director for Abrazo Adoption Associates says there's a lot of talk from lawmakers in Texas about adoption as an alternative to abortion. But she says not enough resources are made available to help women make adoption more appealing. In order for more, more parents to choose adoption, there has to be more social support. There has to be services, there have to be, you know, there's, there's an adoption tax credit that offsets the costs of, of parents that adopt. There's no adoption tax credit for women that place. You can read more about this on our website at ksat.com. Very few details so far this morning got about a rare U.S. military ground raid in northwestern Syria. We have learned a top ISIS leader has been caught. A leader described as actively planning ISIS operations. There are no reports of injuries to U.S. forces. U.S. military ground raids in that part of Syria are very risky. That's because those areas are either controlled by extremists like ISIS or Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's government. Good morning, America. Staying on top of this full story. Look for a report coming up this morning at 7 o'clock. House Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack meets again today for their third public hearing. It's set to begin in a matter of hours. The focus this time will be on former President Trump's effort to pressure Vice President Mike Pence to block certification of the 2020 election. We're going to be bringing you special coverage on the hearing at noon today right here on KSAT 12. Time now, 639 and 76 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, could your child be too young to seek mental health counseling? But one expert is saying right after the break. Just about 643, welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. Data shows 13 to 20% of children living here in the U.S. have experienced a mental disorder. According to a poll taken last year, 62% of parents said there was a change in their child's mental well-being because of remote learning. Sarah Costa talks about how young is too young for mental health counseling. A first grader commits suicide. A young Texas boy loses his battle against depression. A 12 year old is bullied so badly he takes his own life. The headlines are terrifying, but not unusual. Among children ages two to eight years, boys were more likely than girls to have a mental, behavioral, or developmental disorder. Among children living below the federal poverty level, 
The CDC reports one in five children experience a mental disorder. So how young is too young to seek help for your child who is struggling? Treatment can start as young as age two. Play therapy is helpful for children ages three to five. Play therapy can be a preventative approach of really working with those young children so that they don't develop those depressive symptoms or those you know, anxious symptoms later in life where you know, it might be more of a diagnosis. To gauge whether you should put your child into therapy or not, look for warning signs, things like difficulty completing basic needs, trouble engaging with other children, and if they struggle to maintain friendships, talk to their teachers, caregivers, and friends. They can give you an outside point of view. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Okay, 644, 76 degrees. Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos with those roadways. Hey, good morning, guys. Well, things aren't looking too bad from the shots at Trans Guide. Let's get a wider look and drive around town. As you can see, things are off. People are moving this morning as the city continues to wake up and get out on the roadways. But thankfully, uh, no major issues to report just yet. We did have that massive crash off of 35 near the northeast side that has since cleared out. But uh, of course, we'll work to gather more information as the day does go on. But thankfully, right now, you are in the clear. You can breathe a sigh of relief with that cup of coffee, but be on the lookout. Stalls are the big problem right now. I 10 eastbound at Martin Luther King Drive. We told you about this earlier, so as we get that wide look at the map, you can see we have a few more that are being picked up right there. But you also notice we have several active construction spots. Do you want to mention this today? This should be wrapping up that stripe work near I 35 in Comal County. Uh, this did start uh, today and should be finishing around three in the afternoon. But keep in mind when it starts at nine, crews will probably get out there a little bit earlier, so make sure you you plan your commute accordingly because you can expect a double northbound shoulder lane closure from FM 2252 to Schwab Road. But back here in town, things aren't looking too bad. Guys, thank you, Stephen. Thank you. More of that Saharan dust out there. And another pretty picture. Kind yeah, of. <laughs> makes for beautiful pictures, beautiful uh, sunset. Of course, yesterday we had those extra clouds hanging around. That is a great shot, but uh, yeah, that orangey glow looks like uh, something out of a sci-fi movie. That's going to be the situation again today with that hazy, hazy look out there, that orangey, hazy look. We've got our morning clouds, and it looks like some haze off in the distance as well. 78 degrees here in town, uh, mid-70s all around uh, most all of the, the county. 75 Castroville, low 70s in the the, uh, hill country and we are going to see obviously a lot of clouds this morning some sunshine then is going to start to squeeze on through 80 at nine o'clock and then we make it up through the mid upper 80s 90 at noon wind is going to be out of the south about uh, 10 15 miles per hour not overly breezy today but uh, enough of a breeze out there and then 90 for a high temperature later on today it's going to be that hazy sunshine and we will be in the triple digits now for really the foreseeable future. Yesterday, of course, we, I say, only hit 95 degrees thanks to those extra clouds hanging around here, but that's not the situation today. One nice thing is at least the humidity is going to be dropping down somewhat this afternoon, so we won't have oppressively high heat index readings. Then we go through that 24 hour cycle, comes back up tomorrow morning, will drop somewhat by the uh, afternoon then tomorrow. As far as high temperatures today, yep, 100 in most locations, uh, just a couple of upper 90s here and there. The Lotus 98, 99 Leon Springs, but everybody else we are looking at some uh, triple digit readings. And uh, if you like consistency, I mean, boy, there's nothing more consistent than that. Bunch of zeros on there and triple digits all the way through the middle part of next week. The one glimmer of hope is that the high, which is pretty much in control of the southern half of the country, keeps all of the the storm track, if you will, up there to the north of us. That's the uh, the jet stream where those lines are closer together. And that's where all the activity has been taking place. Flooding in Yellowstone, severe weather up around the Great, Way, Great Lakes the past couple of days. But this high stays in control of us. It's just pushing down on the atmosphere and it's a dome that is keeping anything from really popping up but as it we keep this kind of easterly flow around here going into next week that the hope is that we will get some sort of a disturbance trying to move on in here to give us that chance of rain or at least some sea breeze showers that would try and work their way in here a little bit further again we're kind of wrapping around that uh, that clockwise flow around that high but that's the only hope as of right now as for anything in the tropics hurricane centers 
sort of keeping an eye on Central America if something tries to develop down there in the next five days. But um, that, once again, is kind of grasping at straws. 90 at noon today, mostly sunny skies. High temperature makes it up to 100. It's going to be that hazy, that orangey look to the sky with all the Saharan dust out there. At least that's going to be starting to kind of thin out over the next couple of days. Won't be as big of an issue. It looks like it may try and come back by the middle of next week. And the weekend, Father's Day Sunday, long Juneteenth holiday weekend. Hot. Hot. That's all. That's that all. was that was the end of the <laughs> sentence, wasn't That's it? The end yeah. of okay. Hot. But I mean, you're right. If you like that consistent, you know, temperature yes. on there, yes. you'll for, be happy. For folks for that just time. love. Yeah. You know, our soundtrack right now is. <sighs> <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, 649, 76 degrees. And according to the CDC, one in five women in the U.S. has a tough time getting pregnant. Tomorrow on GMSA, we are separating fact from fiction when it comes to infertility. An NBA champion could be crowned tonight. Right now, the Golden State Warriors need one more win over the Celtics to win the title, but Boston will be playing in front of their home crowd, trying to force a Game 7. Warriors Celtics tips off tonight at 8. You can watch it live right here on KSAT 12. That will be a tough crowd for the Warriors and taking a look outside with live cam looking kind of pretty out there at 76 degrees. We still have some clouds for now. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. San Antonio police are searching for the person involved in a shooting that's left one person injured. We're learning that a 20 year old victim was taken to University Hospital and we're told he is expected to be OK. But San Antonio police have been working hard to gather and piece together the information and learn why a 28 year old victim was shot and more importantly, who shot him. San Antonio police did respond to the 1100 block of Callahan Road close to one o'clock this morning. That that's the Vista Meadow Apartments located on the city's west side near Culebra Road. According to the victim, he was pulling into the parking lot of the apartment complex to visit someone when a person driving a white car pulled up and opened fire on him, hitting him in the arm. As of right now, the victim has not been able to provide police with a good or clear description of the suspect, other than the fact that he was driving a white car. Now, police also tell us that nobody at that apartment complex claims to know the victim. This is a situation that's under investigation. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And a reminder, the House Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack meets again today for their third public hearing. It is set to begin in just a few hours. The focus this time will be on former President Trump's effort to pressure Vice President Mike Pence to block the certification of the 2020 election. We are going to be bringing you special coverage of that hearing at noon today here on KSAT. Coming up today on GMSA 9, Tiffany Huertas is going to give us a look at a new summer camp focused on STEM related activities, including how to fly drones. Plus a local high school graduate with a passion for helping others is ready for the next chapter in her life. Jonathan Goto will explain how she used her time in high school to help catapult her career. Top stories and more coming up today at 9. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Hey, if you're going to grab that cup of coffee, well, you're in luck. Nothing major is going to slow you down, at least at this hour. Did see a little bit of a slowdown, though, off US 90 at Couples. Keep in mind, that's a major gateway to the San Antonio area, so we can expect to see some congestion as the morning does go on. But stalls have been the big problem. Still have this guy out there at I-10 Eastbound at Martin Luther King Drive. But wide look at the map doesn't really show much else other than those stalls and those active construction spots. So keep in mind, crews will be getting out there probably within the next few minutes to work on the roadways, but the end game to make the roads a better place. But back here at US 90, a couple's things are moving. Mike Oster Hage. Thanks, sir. Lots of clouds hanging around here this morning. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you see the orangey look at the Saharan dust yet, but that's definitely going to be hanging around here. 77 degrees here in town, 75 Port A, Castroville, Stinson, Converse, New Braunfels at 76, 90 at noon, 100 again for a high temperature after our little bit of a reprieve from the extreme heat yesterday. <laughs> and over the next few days, Nothing changes. No. Nothing changes. Wow. Father's Day Sunday and, of course, the long Juneteenth holiday. We'll just wake up early to enjoy the outdoors. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Welcome back, by the way. Thank you. Yet Welcome again. Back. You've got that Hollywood glow going on. <laughs> we approve. Or we the approved. high pro glow, one of the two. So, <laughs> made some sunglasses over here. We'll see you back here, here at night. <laughs>